In Vallejo, she's a curiosity, a doomed old cargo ship once known as the Solon Termin. She's rusty, she's peeling. As people watch, she's disappearing piece by piece, and that makes her the first of her kind around here, in a way. We were ship builders, not ship wreckers. When the Navy abandoned Mare Island in 1996, it left behind an empty shell. 6,000 people lost their jobs. The city of Vallejo would go bankrupt. It was one indignity after another. Well, things went downhill, you know. A lot of uh, hard times when you ain't got money. Tony Avila lived it. His father was one of the men laid off from the base. That closure started a personal skid that would lead Tony to drugs, alcohol, prison. He went so long without a job that he's still paying off a car repair by working for a mechanic after hours. So when the Solon Terman arrived for dismantling, Tony saw it as a way to support his wife and a daughter who'd lost faith in him. She had never seen me be so persistent, and I stood in Mare Island for three months, Monday through Friday, every single day. And they would tell me, no, we're not hiring, no, we're not hiring. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't hear of it. You know, I kept standing there and I'd just tell them, you know, well, sir, if you need my help, I'm here. I'm here in case you need me, I'm here. I'm here, I just want a chance. Tony finally did get a break because he had training as a welder. And Jay Anist, who runs the recycling operation, wanted to hire locals from Vallejo. It's a bit of pressure. Everybody expects us to have 25,000 people and whistles blowing four times a day. Uh, we're just not that big, but you know, we're, we're, we're a small component in the revitalization uh, of this area. A small component devouring a 690 foot ship with one inch thick steel, one chunk at a time. In theory, at least, you'd think it might be fairly straightforward. Just a matter of cutting, lifting, placing, and eventually disposing. But when each of those pieces weighs as much as 40,000 pounds, you know it gets complicated. Begin with stuff like the asbestos, the PCBs, the lead-based paint. When a burner like Tony torches that steel, the air fills with toxins. This may be a dream job, but it's hard work and it's dangerous. When you get burned, sometimes it's hot, you're sweating, you know, and it's constant. The removal process happens methodically, but on a very large scale, from top to bottom. Bill McNeil pre-calculates the weight of every piece. Any one of us that's been doing it for a long time can come within 10% just looking at a piece. Swing right. Imagine all those tons balanced so perfectly that a 200-pound man can push them around with either hand. With every stage, what's left of the Solon Terman gets smaller and smaller. She will yield 9,000 tons of mostly steel when finally chewed up. What began as a ship finishes as scrap. In a once busy place like Mare Island, these are a far cry from the glory days when ships arrived in pieces and left intact. But 10 miles away in Sassoon Bay, the mothball fleet has 50 others like the Solon Terman. And as Tony Avila knows all too well, pieces can make a man and a city whole again. Your dad, what would your dad say about this? Oh, man, my dad. <sighs> he was just saying, I'm proud of you, son. From Vallejo, Wayne Friedman, ABC7 News.